Hey everybody, it's Mad Max again with the Raid video. Now this is my segment on faction wars. I've been meaning to do this. I got through, I completed all my faction wars uh, a few months back. I know people struggle with faction wars. I mean, you know, and I, I understand that. I was struggling with the last three. And of course, you know, it's not about, you know, you got to have this particular lineup or that particular lineup a lot of time. But, you know, you're going to get good champions, you're going to get bad champions, but, you know, and I was really short on some skinwalkers and a few other things. But this is a chance that I used that got through it, so I want to share it with you so it, maybe it helps you out. Maybe you get through the faction war, and maybe, you know, it makes you, you know, get it. So if you would, hit that little red subscribe button, give it a thumbs up if you like. You got any comments, any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. So the first faction is going to be the uh, the Sacred Order, and I'm going to try to do two of these every day until I finally get through with all of them. Then uh, I may miss. Now, when I originally did this, I did not have God Seeker, and I used Cardinal because Cardinal revives everybody, it gives them a full turn meter, and so with Deacon speeding everybody up, and I. I'm going to try to make sure I've got all of these guys in the in the thing. But anyway, I'm going to say, I think I remember right, I used Mordecai. But God's Seeker revives, will revive somebody too. So, you know, you don't need to keep Cardinal in there. Because the way I've got Cardinal set up, it's really tanky. And it's really not doing a whole lot of damage and stuff. But, you know, I've, Mordecai is just for my spider. But it works here too. I mean, you know, he's squishy. But that he does drop the the turn meter. He does do all those. Uh, he does all those burns. So you know, as you look, you know everybody is already just about dead. I mean, you know, there's well, you're looking at. 20 something seconds here already. And this is a much faster run if I had Cardinal in there because Cardinal's not doing any damage at all. Now, Mordecai does a lot of damage, but he, like I said, he is fairly squishy. I love Deacon. Deacon lowers the turn meter on everybody, increases the turn, you know, he lowers the turn meter on the enemies, he increases the turn meter on yours, you know, and if you look now, nobody can take the, uh, the buffs except for that one champ now. Now see, he put debuff something. So Jamal comes back with that. He comes back with that thing where, you know, when anybody plays a debuff, he'll sit down and he shoots them. And I have toxic gear on. That's when there's so many little, you know, 2.5% poison zones. I've got a complete set of toxic gear on him. Now, they're going to attack, of course, the ads first because the ads are the ones with the most hit points. But now, when you got Mordecai in here, the, when I took Cardinal out, each time that this goes, they take a turn, those are those burns are doing 3% damage. So you're getting 3% to the balls from the ad, 3% from, you know, 3% on the balls. So you're getting 9% of the hit points from that. Well, one of them's dead now, so you're only getting six when they take a turn. Of course, now they're both dead. But And Mordecai knocked his turn meter down some. And, of course, he's going to res everybody. And they're going to attack the, the adds again, probably, because they're the ones with the least amount of hit points. But these adds don't heal. Some of these adds heal when you get to, a, when you get to the boss and stuff. But probably this is going to wind up being about a little over a three-minute run. This is not bad, and you want to be able to you want to be able to have a good quick run of this because what you want is when you get when even after you finish these, these are where you're getting the four six-star enhancements. It's where you're getting all that goodies for your, you know, for you to forge with so you can forge good gear. I like Mordecai, so you just knock the turn meter back down some, you know. Then you got Deacon knocking it down some. He's got a lot of poison stacked up. You look, he's down to about 25% now. This is gonna go, this is gonna go probably the next turn. 
with all those poisons up and everything and all the damage that they're doing, it's probably he's going to end either the next turn or the turn after, and I think it's going to be the next turn. So it's over a little bit over a three-minute run for this. It's a good team. Three minutes, 11 seconds. And see, you get the 18 of the of the ascendant stuff or, or the legendary stuff to to go with. You got a five star enhancement, a four star enhancement. That's what you're looking for because you always need enhancements. Enhancements make a big difference. And okay, so let's go over some of these champs. I have made videos of these guys, but you know you don't want to go back. I'm sure and hunt all these videos. So. A quick look at what they do. Let's see. Shamel, if you look, he's got his toxic set on. None of his gears that send it. I just never have done that. I've got other champs. I'm doing clan boss and other things that I'm trying to, to get up. He worked. I don't use him in a lot of situations except for Hydra. He's really good at Hydra because he keeps that fear off from you. When you look at his skills, you know, what he has is each critical hit this champion does increase the turn meter by seven and a half. So you get him up to 100% when he does that triple shot, he's automatically increased his turn meter by 22.5%. Now, whenever you an ally receives a fear, a true fear of debuff on, from an enemy, this skill will instantly remove the debuff and fill the ally's turn meter by 15%. So if everybody gets filled up with a true fear or true fear and he removes that, he's automatically got 60% turn meter. So he is going to keep, so if you got somebody that, that is fearing a lot, they're not fearing with him in the party. And he just sat down and he keeps going time and time again. Now his big strong hit is at A2. He attacks one enemy three times, will now ignore 25% of the target uh, defense. He will ignore another 25% or the target defense for each buff on this champion. So if he's got three, if he's got three buffs up, he's ignoring 100 percent of the de of the defense, and he places a true fear if he kills anyone. Now, where his where the poison is so good, it causes a one. He attacks an enemy. He attacks one enemy. He has a 50 percent chance of decreasing the the duration of a random buff on the target by one turn. And every time an enemy places a debuff on an ally, he uses a skill against that enemy. So you go into Dragon, and Dragon goes out and he puts out like three or four debuffs on you. And he does it on everybody, on five people. So he's going to shoot 20 times. It's not a really hard hit. But what that's going to do is, is, with that toxic gear on, it's going to max out those little poisons. He's going to get 10 of those poisons up. And at two and a half percent, so that's 20k worth of damage, which is 200k. That's 200k worth of damage, just because of that one skill. It's a really great skill. His masteries are straight down to War Master, and of course I've got the thing increased speed for six for each enemy he kills, because he's going to kill a pretty good bit of enemies when he goes through something like Doom Tower or something I have used in there. He's not want to use anymore, but he does, he did work. Has a 30 percent chance to get the cooldown. By 30 percent and I go down and get Lords of Steel and I add the accuracy because you need a lot of accuracy for him you know, for all that to stick. All right that's Shamel and you've got the one I've got is Archbishop. I love Archbishop. He's a great champion to have. Uh, he is really really good. That A2 is really great. He blocks buffs for two turns and he does a heal reduction for two turns. And he increases the accuracy on everybody for two turns. This is a great skill. And it hits pretty hard, too. It's, I mean, it's a pretty good hard-hitting skill. You look at his artifacts. He's got, you know, two speed. He's got one set of um, perception gear on. And he's got a set of fatal gear on. And, you know, he's got 65% crit rate. I wish his crit rate was up to 35%. He had a lot harder than what he does right now. He's got 190 speed, a little bit slower than what I like to have. His defense is 27, 2800. His uh, attack is 3700. He's a little bit tanky, and he could do a lot more damage if I changed his gear around some. But I don't really want him to go down. I mean, you know, because you 
anybody that's got that good of a debuff where he healed reduction, he does block damage, you want him to build a little bit on the tanky side, not his strength. He also has that increased defense, and he also has that shield that he throws up. His passive removes all decreased defense debuffs and weakened debuffs from this champion at the start of each turn. He uh, attacks one enemy, transfers a debuff from him, got a 75% chance, and he also has a 75% chance of stealing a random buff. So, you know, if they've got an unkillable on them, and that's all they got on them, a lot of times I've seen him just steal that thing off. He's got 262 accuracy, of course. You know, you want him to have a lot of accuracy. And, you know, it's his masteries are basically straight down to ward master for the offense part. He's got the extend and debuffs, extend buffs. He's got the Lords of Steel and all the accuracy as I can get him for his masteries. Okay, so that's those two. And let's see, we had Godseeker and... Godseeker is really, really good. I mean, Godseeker, this is Godseeker's masteries. I mean, you know, you go straight down. I get the offensive, the war master. I've got the, I've got the extends, the buffs that she casts, the Lords of Steel. You know, it's basically increased the amount of healing, and the value of the shield. Plus, you know, when you look at her, you look at her, she's got... She defensive base. She attacks one enemy, heals the ally with the lowest hit point by 5% of their max HP. Once you book her out, that's another 15, you know, it's another 15%, so she heals it by 20%. She attacks all enemy, heals all allies by 15% of their max HP. Then she increased the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn. This is a great thing to have. And she increases the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn. That's, that's, she also, she revives somebody on a four-turn cooldown. And she fills her turn meter by 50%. Her passive skill, once every four rounds, she automatically raises somebody up. You know, the passive effect increased the amount of healing the allies received by 10%. If the ally is about to get killed by a fatal hit. It preempts that hit and instantly places revival on death and buff for one turn before the damage is taken. So they, what it is, you know, like they're fixing to die, but they just revive. I mean, it's, you can't tell. She's a great champion. Everybody, you know, everybody likes her. She's basically a, she's basically almost, a, she's like a legendary and an epic skin is what she is. Uh, Deacon, Deacon's got all speed gear on. You look, he's got, He's tanky. I want him alive. You know, he's, he's an attack-based champ. You look at his defense. He's got 2,500 defense. He's got 4,200, you know, HP, but he's attack-based. I've got his attack, you know, up some, but, you know, he's got 265 speed. You want him really fast. His crit rate's over 100%. His crit damage is low. It's only 125, but his accuracy is almost 300. Now, the reason you want him extremely fast is because of this ability right here. He fills the turn meter of all allies by 15%, decreases the turn meter by 15% of the enemy, and he grants an extra turn. So his extra turn is this turn right here. He's going to attack all allies, have an 80% chance of placing a 60% decreased uh, defense buff. Now, this goes to 100% when he's booked out on three-turn cooldown. So what you get is he throws this, he gets an extra turn, he throws this, then he's going to sit down and he's going to attack with his A1, and he has a, he has a two turn, he has a chance for two turns of placing, a 50% chance of placing a lead jump. And then he comes back after he does that and the rotation starts all over again. And he's decreasing turn meter on the enemy, increasing your turn meter. So he's just speeding everybody up. Plus, he's in the lead because he has increased his allied speed in all battles by 19%. A lot of people get this wrong because they'll put Arbiter or something like that in the lead in a lot of places. And she only has that aura where it's in arena. It doesn't work anywhere else. So that aura doesn't do anything for you. But people don't look at that. Okay, his mastery, you know, like I said, it's straight down. He gets the... He gets the 
Lord Master, he gets the extra stuff here. I mean, I he comes out, and what he gets is has a 30% chance of placing a, a duration of the debuff on somebody because he does not have any buffs that he puts on anybody. He just has debuffs, so you don't want the other one. That's the reason his masters are like that. And the very last one is Mordecai. Mordecai I've had forever and a day, it seems like. I got him about three months after I started playing this game. And I was able to build a spider team really fast because I got him early. He is, he really shines in spider. He is a great spider. He's probably the very best spider champ that is. Now, he's got two sets of speed on here. The other is just, you know, he needs to have a different set than the than this, I mean, because this is a four set piece, but it's got good stat. It's got the attack, the crit rate, it's got a triple roll in crit rate. So you got 77% crit rate. When I use him in Spider, I used to a lot of times I'd have Bad L as the lead, so 100% crit rate with him in the lead because of the aura. And you know, and then he's got a set of destroy boots on 45, 45 speed, you got a little bit of HP and some more accuracy. His accuracy is 342. He can take, he can work almost anywhere with that much accuracy. His um, crit damage is really high with 212. You know, it's not as high as I've seen a lot, but it's still a good one. He's got 200 speed. His defense is 2300, but he's still slightly squishy. He's got only about 30K worth of hit points. His uh, attack is 3500. And, you know, he, when you look at him, I don't even have him completely done out. If I did, I would come down, I would get this, but that's not what I use him for. I mean, I use him for those burns. That's what he's there for. He is there not for, it's not so much, his individual damage is really good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he does quite a bit of damage, but this right here, as far as spider, and, and even on those, mobs that have five on there. So he's going to burn everybody. So when those burns go off, that's 15% damage. It's a 100% chance. It increases the attack on everybody for three turns. It's it's going to set down. It's going to burn, 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 and burn. And so, you know, when you talk about five burns going off, that's 15% of their health that's gone. And then he set down, he's got a 100% chance of making the turn meter go down by 15%, fills the turn meter of the allies by 15%. So when you're looking, you've got Deacon and him both, so you're you're increasing the turn meter between the two of these when these things go off by 30%. Yours are going up by 30, theirs are going down by 30. That's huge. That is that is really huge about your turn meter. Now, he attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of decreasing the target turn meter by 10%. He has a 60% said if the target's under an HP burn. Everything always burns with him. And the debuff goes to, chance goes to 45, you know, another 15%. So it's really a 75% once he buffed out. He is an excellent champ for spider. Any spider, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's false spider. I don't care if it's neither spider. I mean, you know, if you keep them alive and neither, that's the hardest part when you get into Doom Tower Heart. But it works really good. But guys, that is the video. I want to thank everybody for watching. Like I said, I'm going to try to do all of these. So, you know, maybe this will help you get through the faction wars. Because getting Lydia is a big deal. And she is really great. But thanks for watching, guys. And like I said, remember to hit that little red subscribe button. you got any questions, just get back to me with the comments.